Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. Oh, hell no. Hi guys, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about this entire situation with Anna Quinn, Fresh and Fit, and Abba and Preach. Now, the reason why I wanted to give commentary on this situation is because it highlights my opinion and stance on why I didn't back up the Kevin Samuels petition. And the reason is because I felt like it just wasn't the correct approach. And the reason is because we did not include our allies with the petition that was created. When we speak on the petition that was made for Kevin Samuels, why did we go after Kevin? Why didn't we go after you two? That would have made a greater impact and we should have included our allies. Why is YouTube allowing this type of speech on their platform? That's who the petition should have been about, not Kevin Samuels. Because uh, if we get rid of Kevin, Okay, there are going to be other black males out here that feel like they can come on here and spew hate speech similar to Kevin Samuels. It doesn't solve the issue. Kevin Samuels is not the tumor. He's a small fish in a very big pond. I also wanted us to attack the actual issue, which is YouTube, the platform, allowing this type of speech on their platform and overall behavior when it comes to the red pill community as a whole. This is why I am speaking on this situation. I'm not going to get into all of the drama, but I wanted to highlight this particular situation with Anna Quinn because I feel like it could have been prevented. It could have been prevented if... We created a petition of some kind that included our allies that also targeted YouTube, the platform, because they're allowing this behavior on their platform and they're allowing this hate speech on their platform and how it targets women and how it promotes violence against us. So let's go ahead and get right into today's video. So if you don't know who Anna Quinn is, she is a fitness guru. She has an online business where she services women with their weight loss journey and helping them improve their fitness. Now, this entire situation went down after Abba and Preach exposed Fresh and Fit the podcast for their unethical views and unethical business practices. And Quinn also decided to chime in and she exposed them with a YouTube video titled Lies Exposed at Fresh and Fit and Fresh. Rods. Someone who claims to be a male self-improvement podcast, the top, the best, and they have over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I didn't know until I looked into. Um, and they are creating a culture of hateful, mean, uh, I'm not going to continue commenting, but just they're creating a disgusting culture of men who treat women like crap. And um, so I'm taking a stand and I'm sharing because... I can. So, what happened, I will be providing evidence. Let me scooch over so when I edit it, it can be here. Um, basically, Myron reached out to me. He is half of Fresh and Fit. I think he's fresh, but um, I don't think he's fresh. I think his name is Fresh on the podcast. But he reached out to me and wanted to do a podcast, or wanted me to collaborate with him for his show. At the time, I don't know what his uh, following is now, but he had like 10,000 followers on Instagram. I have had at that time around like 42,000, 40,000, something like that. Um, and so I didn't respond to the DM, to be honest. Then one of my friends who I'm gonna uh, leave anonymous right now, just cause I haven't discussed with him whether or not I can share his identity, told me, hey, uh, one of my boys reached out to you, wants to film some content with you. He has a really popular channel, so you should do it. So I actually responded to the DM and I was like, hey, you know, what's up? He said, let's do a collab. I was like, okay, cool. Um, I was actually planning a trip to Miami. So I told him like, this is what I'm gonna be in Miami. Um, I wasn't going to pay to come out to be on his show. And I hadn't even looked into his show. I just kind of went off of the friend's recommendation. 
So Myron and I went back and forth. I'm just gonna pull up the text so I don't say anything that's not true. He asked me when the soonest I was gonna be out there is. I told him that I was planning on being there Friday. He said he wasn't gonna be uh, available then. And then he asked me a relationship question. For some reason, I did not see that mess or that part of the message or I was busy or whatever. So I said, do you wanna make it happen or should I plan for next week? And uh, he said it'd have to be next week. So we're just discussing logistics. I answered his question, said, um, I'm not dating anyone right now, dated someone a couple months last year, but um, before that I was single and I love talking on that topic. He said, oh, okay, cool, I'm up for that. I'm not gonna do anything platonic with you, just being honest. And I thought he was reaching out for a collaboration because we're both well known in the fitness industry. Um, and you know, my Instagram following is larger than his, so at the time I still didn't know he had a 400, you know, him and his partner have a $400,000 400,000 subscriber YouTube page, but I have been approached about collaborations before and so since I was gonna be out there, it's down to do it. So when he said, I'm not trying to do anything platonic with you, it was completely left field for me because I was only thinking we were going to do some kind of fitness related content collab. And he said, no problem, I collab directly with girls I date, no pressure though. And I was like, so if we aren't dating, you don't wanna collab? Because he's never even asked me on a date at this point. So I was like, he said, no, don't mean to be an a-hole, but we have plenty of women in Miami. And I said, well, same, we have plenty of men here in California, so why would I fly to Miami to date someone who I know nothing about? And he said, simple, attractive women are common, high value men are not. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on that yet. Uh, no hard feelings though. I said, you haven't proven to me that you're a high value man. And actually I know quite, I know quite a few high value men. I'm not just an attractive woman. I'm an entrepreneur with a six figure business and a high profile assets. I'm nothing but com nothing but common. I meant to say I'm anything but common. No hard feelings and a smiley face. <laughs> so then I screenshotted his, our conversation, blocked out his name and I posted on my story because I was shocked at this point that someone would use their business, their show to tried to get women and they think that that would work. And I was also shocked that he said that attractive women are common and high value men are not when it's just like he dismissed me as an attractive woman but not a high value man or not a high value woman. And um, you know, I don't know anything about this guy. So for him to tell me that he's this high value man when you're having to use your show to get women, high value men don't have to uh, use their show and clout to get women for the record. Anyway, um, so I posted anonymously and I said, high value men don't talk the way that you did. I have 75 people on my story. I posted a poll and I was like, am I tripping or is this crazy? I forget exactly what I said, but people, I had so many people voting, oh my gosh, like this is insane. And so I said, I, I have 75 people on my story who voted. I can't believe what you said. The comments are insane. Not one person has your side or thinks your approach is appropriate. You're tripping. And I was using emoji faces laughing. I said, maybe you should have me on your podcast so I can teach you how to talk to women. And I sent the screenshots. Then he said, responded to the screenshots that I sent and said, I'm just being honest and stand by it. I'm not collaborating with you unless we have sex. You have had sex with a bunch of dudes I know and aren't special. You could have just said no and kept it moving, but you're clearly in your feelings going through all that effort with a poll, etc. Go ahead and screenshot the conversation of Clout Chase. I don't care what 75 simps said in your story to White Knight, the difference is I say what I want and don't care what you think they do. So at this point, this is where Myron lied and told everyone that I started threatening him. And she blurted out my name. And then she sent me a DM saying like, you should probably rethink how you talk to women, blah, 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 trying to shame me and say like, I can expose you. I, she's like, I'll expose you. I was like, do it, bitch. Like, <laughs> go ahead. Like, I started threatening his business and threatening to expose him. Mess yeah, up. yeah. And she made threats like, oh, I, I'm gonna like, I'll make you look bad. It'll be bad for your business. I said, do it. I'll, 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 mm. I'll share, I'll help you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> None of this happened. You can see in the DMs, that was just a blatant lie. I was like, I was like, we're gonna smash it. She didn't like that. She tried to be like, oh, well, that's your asshole move. Okay, you want me to lie to you and then like try to be on this like other bullshit? Seen it. Another blatant lie from Myron. I defended myself, told him I haven't slept with a bunch of guys. I said I that he is a terrible representation of his podcast and his business and that I would be happy to put him on blast. I told him he has an opportunity to impact, influence men and make a positive impact and the example he's setting is trash. I pity any woman who falls for this stupid scheme to fly out to see you and sleep with you for a week promo on your YouTube channel. 
And then he said, all you'll do is cement my reputation, blah, blah, blah. You don't like it. That's not my problem. Unfortunately, I am who I am. I don't have to worry about an image. And um, that's the end of the conversation. But, well, there was like one more response. Uh, and I said, unless you were there, you don't know anything about the men that I've been with. Unfortunately for women everywhere, you are who you say you are and that's pathetic. And then I blocked him. Unfortunately, the drama doesn't stop there. A little over a month ago, Anna Gwynn uploaded to her YouTube channel a pregnancy reveal video expressing excitement and joy to her fans and followers with her embarking on this journey of motherhood. So I have a little bit of announcement to make for the world. Your girl's pregnant. <laughs> so first things first, let's just get the awkward question out of the way. Was it planned? No. Um, I'm not going to be sharing a lot of the details of the situation, but what can be known is that your girl's gonna be a single mom. Shortly after this video was posted, she was bombarded with harassment and bullying comments, wishing death on her child, you guys. And this was something that has been ongoing for a while now because that podcast episode has been up and posted a little over a month. So she has been receiving comments and she has been receiving DMs and she has just been constantly harassed and bullied for months all because Myron the co-host on Fresh and Fit decided to name drop but not only that he also misled his followers with a false story so I'm gonna also post the video that Anna Quinn recently made behind what she's facing with her health and her unborn child. Hey y'all so I did not want to do another video about this whole situation but because they're gonna be doing a QA and and because things are getting so completely out of hand as if they haven't already been uh, I just wanted to make a little video super short and um, it's a message to Myron and the reason why uh, I'm not just sending this to him is because I realized that he lies a lot and so you know what I figured if I send him a message he's probably gonna lie about it so let's just put it on YouTube and that way there's no room for misinterpretation or lying. So directly from me to him, this is what I wanted to say, what I want to say. I'm reading it on my phone so that I don't get feisty and I only say what needs to be said. <laughs> hey, I just wanna say, so Myron, this one's for you. Hey, I just wanna say this one thing. I've come to the conclusion that you despise women, so I doubt that this will even make a difference to you. But I saw your announcement about the Q&A and I need to make this known. I am losing my baby. I've been on bed rest for a month. My doctors don't know why I'm losing the baby, but the one thing they've told me to do to protect my baby is to rest and avoid any unnecessary stress. For two and a half months, I have been harassed by your following because you gave them my Instagram and you told them to go roast me. After the video I posted, or I'm sorry, until the video I posted, I had not said a thing. I had called my mom crying days before posting that video because the bullying had gotten so bad the bullying that is a direct result of you sharing my Instagram handle and telling people a distorted version of what actually happened. I am not saying that you are single-handedly responsible for my baby dying. What I am saying is that I took steps to avoid all kinds of stress. I haven't worked out in a month. I've stayed home and stayed on my couch. The only stress that has been out of my control is the harassment I've gotten from your followers in the sake of supporting your name. And now I'm being told that in a week or so, I'm gonna go into early labor and I might have two minutes to hold my baby before it dies. I don't know what you have up your sleeve for this Q&A tomorrow, but I do know that everything I shared on that video was 100% honest. What you did to me was wrong. And so with that, know this. If you do anything to stir up more hate from your fans and put more heat on me during this unbelievably dark time, so help me, I will do everything in my power to make sure that you are legally held responsible for everything you deserve. Be careful what you say to your army tomorrow. I don't know why they follow you or why they worship you, but they do. I, I can't I can't really delve into that situation, bro. Well, That's of course you can. Bro, brother, you DM'd her yourself. <laughs>
Yeah, bro. Because I know what that podcast means. It's done so much for my life. But that's like, not my point. That's not my point. You understand that there's something unethical about taking a person's name and their thing and sending it to your fans so they can go harass the person? That is 100% unethical. I can't lie about that. And as I sit home scared to sneeze because I'm terrified I will go into early labor, know that if you try to lie or make things harder on me instead of apologizing for your behavior and manning up, you will be held responsible for inflicting more stress on me. There is a 19 week old life on the line and since reducing stress is the only thing I can do to potentially stop early labor, I needed to send this message. You need to know the seriousness of your actions. Anaquin Fitness. Anaquin Fitness. Let's do this. Okay. Chris, can you just start getting out ready? Yeah. And you want to talk about how you guys um, even started c conversating? Okay, guys. So me and Anna know each other because we are in, in the same fitness, online fitness coaching mastermind. Okay. And uh, we, we we both did pretty well. Um, and we knew each other through that, through that, um, through that program. So we had a mutual friend. I had them reach out uh, to, to her to do a class. So I'm going to show you guys from the beginning, um, from the beginning. All right. So because the thing is, is that she only showed part of the conversation. As a matter of fact, let's play her video, Chris. Now, guys, mind you, this this interaction took place June 3rd. Why is she waiting to now to talk about this? Mm. OK, she could have just ignored it and kept it moving because she already did a podcast interview prior to this explaining this 40,000 something like that. Pay attention to that, guys. That 42,000 is going to be very significant later that she has a big following like that, okay, on Instagram. So let's go ahead and full, play the full text now. Everything from beginning Which to she top. made a video about it, addressing it, but she did not answer and, the and context. Isn't it funny? The moment we said we're going to so expose Chris, everything, should we do this video? Yes, as soon as I the said... The moment we say, oh, we're going to do a full expose on everybody, now you want to make a video giving the whole text. To, try to, to, to but, try to risk it back. But before, you only get a piece of it to uh -huh. push your narrative. Not, not this, Chris, the recorded one but now we're gonna show the whole thing because now we're gonna expose your ass it's, at the, it's the first message at the top of the, uh, the top of the chat. chaser right. now you guys are ready you guys are gonna get the truth now you have her allegation and we you lied yourself we doxed her and that she and that i lied about her threatening the business you doxed let's yourself. do this and here's the thing i'm not gonna attack her character i'm just gonna show you guys the video the allegations yeah chris uh, Chris has it, so he's gonna pull it up right now and share it on screen for you guys. Yeah, we can see it here. So you guys can see it blown up. Shout out to Chris, by the way, in the back, making this seamless. There you go. Thank you guys for bearing with us. This is a live show, man. None of this is scripted. All right. So, yo, we should do a collab, right? Hey, sure. What you got in mind? Smiley face. Instant YouTube collab in Miami. Sure. I'm not sure when I'm gonna be in Miami, but uh, can definitely let you know next time I'm out there. Hit play. Okay, scroll down. When's as soon as you can be out here? Friday, LOL. Oh, damn, I'll be in Vegas, okay? This is when I'm at the CME, okay? Uh, also, we do a nice show where we discuss dating relationships. Are you single or married? Now, I ain't gonna lie. I asked this for two reasons. Number one, to get to see what she would fit in as far as like for the show to see if she's single. And hey, I'll shoot my shot. I don't care. I'm owning it, baby. Yeah. Listen, I'll shoot my shot. On the show all the time, right? I'm used to rejection. We are very direct, man. Yeah. And at the same time, look, he said, you know what? No hard feelings. But yep. she, she kept going. So. Two birds with one stone. I'm not going to sit here and cap and say, I didn't try to shoot my shot. 100%. If you guys watch this podcast, what do I tell you guys? You need to source girls from Instagram. You need to source girls from uh, online dating. You need to source girls from cold approach. You need to grow, source girls from sugar sites, which we're going to discuss that with you as well, guys. Yep. I tell you guys all the time, if you really watch my content, you need to be using every single avenue to get girls. So are you single or married? Want me to make it happen or should I plan for next week? It would have to be next week if we did it. This is because I'm in Vegas for the Conference of Masculine Excellence with Donovan Sharp, okay? Mm -hmm. She goes, uh, so she, would early next week work like Monday or Tuesday? She go, and then I go, that would be tough. You didn't answer my relationship question, LOL. So she goes, I'm so sorry. That message actually didn't load until now for some reason. I am single, okay? She says with an explanation point. I'm actually not dating anyone either right now. I dated someone for a couple months last year. And before that, I was single for about two years, but I love that topic. All right, cool. I'm up front that I'm not going to do anything platonic with you, just being honest. Isn't that what women want, honesty? Exactly. And she goes, I'm confused. I'm not trying to do anything with you except collab. Cool. No problem. I collaborate directly with girls I date. No pressure, though. Which I'm, what, what I meant by that is I've collabed with girls I've dated before. It's not a big deal to me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it is to her, but I'm telling her to me it's not a big deal. Right. Now, is this mixing pleasure with business? 
Yes. Is it stupid? Yes. I will own that. But it's not the way she's trying to spin it on some Weinstein crap. Yeah. Okay. No, don't mean to be an asshole. But we have plenty of women here. So right. So that I tell her straight up. Hey, I don't want to be a jerk, but I I ain't gonna bring a girl out from California and like to be on the show. We got plenty of girls here. Like, no thanks. So she goes. Well, same LOL. We have plenty of men here in California. So why would I fly out to Miami to date who one who I know nothing about? Guys, this is ten seventeen p.m. Okay. Yeah. June third. Simple, attractive women are common. High value men are not. Not hard. No hard feelings, though. I've said that many times on the podcast. Yeah. That's nothing new. You guys know I've said this a million times. So she gets triggered, and she responds with this: "You haven't proven to me that you're a high value man. And actually, I know quite a few high value men. I'm not just an attractive woman. I'm an entrepreneur with a six figure business and a high profile of assets. I'm nothing but common. No hard feelings." So she says what I said again back. I ignore it. Then she messages me again. In fact. Wasn't my friend, neighbor, Mike Rashid, just on your show? This is extremely significant, guys, and she didn't put it before. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Mike Rashid came on our show May 26th, a week prior to this conversation. Yeah. Okay? And we had plans to go out meet with Mike the following week to do a collab with him on his show California. and to go on the No Jumper podcast. Yeah. So her saying this was, I interpreted it. Again, this is how I interpreted it. She might have had another, she might, it might have been harmless on her end, but I interpret it as I'm going to tell Mike that you're talking to me like this and I'm going to mess with your opportunity to go out and do the interview, blah, blah, blah. Now, what she doesn't realize is me and Mike are cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, there's no issues here. Like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, but the fact that she brought that up and brought his name into it, I was like, okay, this girl's on some weird stuff. Power what do I do? I don't respond. Now, it's one o'clock in the morning, guys. We finished the show, and I'm sitting here. Uh, we finished we, we finished a, a podcast, and I'm in the sushi spot with Walt. And you guys know that we're at the sushi spot after every show, right? So she goes, scroll up real quick, Chris. Um, so she goes again. So at 10 o'clock, she messages me. I ignore her. Message me again. High value men don't talk the way you did. I have 75 people in my story who voted in the last hour. I can't believe what you said. The comments are insane. Not one person has your side or thinks your approach is appropriate. You're tripping, dude. She messages me again. Maybe you should have me, have me on your podcast so I can teach you how to talk to women. <laughs> then she antagonizes me further and posts images from her story of people talking smack about me with my name blurred out. So I knew at this point she had the, the she took screenshots ready to expose me. Okay. Yep. Since typing that, it has been uh, made clear to me, made known to me that. Fresh and Fit posted something on Reddit, a screen recording of the exact same conversation I showed y'all and said, Anna unsent messages um, to appear, I'll put the thing here. Anna unsent messages. I unsent one message and you can see because it's the exact same conversation I post, posted. The only message I unsent was when Myron said that there, you know, attractive women are common, high value men are not. I said, there are plenty, I know, I know quite a few high value men, man, men, bleh. In fact, Mike Rashid, my neighbor, isn't Mike Rashid, wasn't he just on your show? Cause he lives in the same city I live in. So I unsent that one message right after I sent it. And I guess he still had, or I, maybe like later. And the reason I unsent that one message was because I was like, why are you name dropping your friend, Mike Rashid? He knows, they know he lives in California but I just didn't feel like I should involve him because it has nothing to do with him. But he is, you know, to Myron's definition, what a high value man would be and much more successful than Myron, which is why I mentioned him because I was like, it's not like I don't know high value in your opinion, high value men. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Um, Myron needs to call off his army. He has had so much opportunity to do so and he doesn't care to, it's not important to him. And now I've posted a prayer request post because of this situation with my child and people are commenting saying they hope my baby dies. They're saying that I'm getting what comes to me because of karma and that I deserve this. There you go, Myron, there's your culture. There's your tribe. There are your people. 
you've had so many opportunities, so many chances, so much time since that video passed to make, to say, you know what? I'm sorry for telling y'all to go after this girl. She didn't deserve that, but you're not going to. So I just, man, I don't know what's gonna be said on that Q and A tomorrow, but it's pointless. It's not even worth my time. That's all. So my final thoughts when it comes to this drama is the simple fact that Myron never took accountability and he's wanting to hold Anna Quinn more accountable for how she reacted to his approach, which was disgusting. He wants to hold her more accountable when in fact he set the tone for all of this. He is the one that approached her in such a poor an unethical business manner. And he wants to brush over that. He wants to downplay that. And then throughout the entire segment within this four hour live stream where he spoke on this situation, he would take accountability, but then he would excuse his behavior. And that's unacceptable. So I really do hope Anna Quinn takes legal action because she has the evidence. She has the proof to back up her claims. Do I feel like Anna Quinn is innocent in this entire situation? No, I don't, not at all. I felt like she could have handled this situation better because she did. She exposed him on her Instagram story. Now that I did not post in this video, I didn't post those receipts because that live stream, you guys, was so long it was like four and a half hours and then the segment that he did on anna quinn was just i don't know like 30 to 40 minutes it was just a lot so i didn't post all of it but i did watch all of it to where i can give you a fair point of view and to be honest i understand she didn't react in the best way and i understand that she did expose him on his instagram story but she was only reacting to what he did to her She's only reacting to how he was talking to her, how he approached her, how he was communicating with her in the DMs. So I feel like she had every right to be upset. Did she have to take it to her IG story? No. And then another point that I want to make is he's the one with the larger platform. So he's going to be more liable than she is. Lastly, this entire situation was ego driven. Myron was embarrassed that she exposed who he really was. He doesn't practice what he preaches. And he didn't like how she exposed him and his quote unquote game, which is weak, to his followers, to men that look up to him, to men that take his advice. So it's honestly <laughs> embarrassing. But one thing's for sure when it comes to all of this. These men are jumping through hoops, doing the most all to get women. And what they don't understand, they place us on a pedestal when they do that. They place us on a pedestal. They're getting money to get the women, the car to get the women, the house, the condo, the apartment to get the women, school and becoming educated to get the women. Now, at any point in time, these men can choose themselves and say, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna get all of those things for me. Not because I can't control my sexual urges and I lack discipline. I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna make something of myself because I deserve that for me, not because I'm trying to get women. But that's their approach to life. And it's sad because honestly, I don't really see how they're successful with it at all. And this just proves this. This entire Anna Quinn situation proves his method. <laughs> it doesn't work in the real world. So that's all that I have regarding this video, you guys. I would love your thoughts and opinions. So make sure you comment them down below. And if you're new here, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you are notified for when I upload. This is Real Talk with Yanni, and I will see you guys in my next video.